ASH 2015 coverage continues. I'm Thomas Baldrick, joined now by Dr. Courtney DiNardo from the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Thank you for coming by, we appreciate thank, it. Thank you for the invitation, happy to be here. Let's talk about some of your work. We've got uh, first a, a phase 1B study of venetoclax in combination with decitabine or azacitidine, and this is for older AML patients who are kind of in an unmet need situation. Can That's you true. talk about that? Sure, I think um, despite everything that we've learned in the past 15, 20 years, there's been this explosion of, of scientific understanding of mm -hmm. the genetics underlying leukemias, but that hasn't quite yet translated into standard treatment algorithms for our elderly patients. And so there is still very much a unmet need for, for these patients. So it's kind of a mouthful, the title, but what it is is it's a it's a um, induction, it's a, it's a frontline treatment strategy for our patients 65 years of age or older. So in addition to the hypomethylating agents, either Videza or Decitabine, um, we add ABT199, which is now called Venetoclax, to that regimen. And Venetoclax is an oral, daily, continuous therapy. Um, and the hypomethylating agents are given every 28 days, just as they normally would. And in, um, in the frontline setting, which we've, we've used it now, we've treated 34 patients. Um, we've do dose escalated the venetoclax, so the, the hypomethylating agent backbone, the videza and the decitabine is very standard. Um, and we add, we added 400 milligrams of venetoclax orally daily, and then we escalated it up to 800. And so those were the results we showed yesterday. Um, and with, um, with either the 400 or the 800 dose, we had um, very nice early responses seen. We had of 34 patients, 24 patients achieved either a complete remission or a complete remission with incomplete count recovery, um, which is which leads to an overall response rate of 71% CRCRI rate, which is not something you expect to see with the hypomethylating agents alone. It's it's higher than what you would expect, and it is also the responses were seen earlier than we would initially expect. Um, typically, with the hypomethylating agents in elderly patients, we see responses at about four to six cycles, and we were seeing them within one to three cycles, with a median time to response of under 30 days. So that was. That was great to see. Certainly validates your suspicions, huh? Yes, it does. Um, and in terms of tolerability, which is also important in this patient population that has a higher risk of, of you know, uh, comorbidities and other uh, and other complications, we we didn't see much in terms of an increased risk of of signal toxicity outside of just the hypomethylating agent therapy alone. So cytopenia is related to that, but um, but it's been overall um, um, safe also, which is, which is important. So there are some unique complications in treating these patients. What would you say they are? Yeah, I think, I think with acute myeloid patients in particular, there is um, uh, an unappreciated complication rate in terms of, of thrombocytopenia and, and anemia-related complications. These patients are coming into the hospital often two to three times a week, getting their counts checked, getting transfusions, and so kind of quality of life in terms of time spent in a, in a hospitalization setting is is something that is really, um, I think, important for those patients, as well as just the infections and the and the immune deficiency that our patients have. Um, there's, you know, in addition to leukemia-related complications, there's infectious and cytopenia-related complications also. So it is very much a challenging population. So you've created a pleasant surprise with this research. How do you build upon it? Well, I think the most important thing is to just validate these patients um, yeah, moving forward with, with just an increased sample size. With 34 patients so far, it's, it's exciting and it's encouraging, but, but certainly nothing that is game-changing yet. So we are continuing um, the, the final cohort in the, in the escalation will go up to 12, 1,200 milligrams of ABT199 venetoclax, which is what's been used in some of the relapsed refractory AML studies that we've done already. So we know that that dose is safe. So we'll continue that, and then we'll move forward into a into the kind of stage two part where we expand at our dose and, and confirm these preliminary findings. Okay, congratulations. Thank Best of luck so going much. forward. Appreciate it. Okay.